On May 5th, 2021, AOC tweeted, let's do insulin next, in reference to pursuing an IP waiver on insulin, as is currently under consideration for the COVID-19 vaccine families. I don't want to explore what this means, whether it's a good idea, whether it's a bad idea, but ultimately I want you to make your own decision. I'm Ben, a PhD scientist turned CEO, and about two years ago or so, the startup company that I was working for was acquired for about $800 million because we were working on an insulin therapy that we thought could be a cure for diabetes. Let me explain a little bit of the background that I have come to understand having kind of sat in this space, in this sphere, uh, and try and think from both sides, both the government and the taxpayer and the people side, as well as what these large pharmaceutical companies are actually thinking. First piece of background that I think is important to understand, uh, just so that we have a foundation, is what is a patent? A patent is an agreement between an inventor and the governments of the world, that in exchange for disclosing how an invention works, the governments will protect the inventor's rights to commercially exploit, which basically makes money off, uh, of the technology for a period of up to 20 years. It provides an enforceable legal right to prevent other people from copying your invention, from copying your idea. After that 20 year period, it lapses. Anyone can use the idea to make money. This system was developed by governments in the middle of the industrial revolution, sort of 1760s or so, to promote exactly that, the disclosure of ideas, the disclosure of inventions, the same idea essentially behind academic publishing, to disseminate inventive capability and reward inventive companies for disclosing their ideas rather than keeping them secret. And really the motivating fact behind that point was that the governments didn't want people uh, working on fantastic, amazing technologies, that if the companies failed for whatever reason, that knowledge, those creations would be lost forever. They wanted instead to encourage uh, companies to disseminate their findings so that the world could hear about it. And if those companies didn't work out for whatever reason, that those ideas wouldn't be lost, that they could be used by other people later down the line. R totally a smart idea. So where we are at the moment is that there is an argument for revoking this protection specifically around things like the COVID vaccine. Why? Because there is a global emergency, people are dying by the thousands, let's make the vaccine freely producible by anyone with the capability so any company around the world can make it, we can produce as much as, as possible, as much as, that we, as we need, and we can treat as many people as quickly as we can. Totally makes sense, I understand this viewpoint entirely. There is precedent for exactly this sort of behaviour. Jonas Salk, who was an American uh, vaccine vir uh, virologist and inventor, created the polio vaccine. He chose famously not to patent this invention, exactly thinking along these sorts of lines. Let's kill the thing as fast as possible. Anyone that can make it, should make it. Let's get it out the doors. As an important bit of background, the polio vaccine was incredibly hard uh, and incredibly expensive to develop. I've read some estimates of uh, it costing tens, if, if not hundreds of millions of dollars to produce over the duration of, of its discovery. And important to understand here is that all of this development, or pretty much all of this development, the, the vast, vast, vast majority of it was funded by the public, by charitable donations through some uh, NGOs and some non-profits, as well as through government grants. So funded by the taxpayer, funded by the people at the end of the day. So when considering patenting, Jonas said the people were paid for it, so the people should own it. Totally makes sense. The next step in the process, though, is the bit that I think is worth focusing on. Great, the idea is freely out there, but who is it that starts producing this stuff? Who, who actually starts making these vaccines en masse and distributing them? And what does it take? It takes expensive labs, it takes equipment, it takes expertise, it takes money. Why do the companies actually go through this process? Absolutely, because they want to do something positive in the world and solve a problem, but still it is fundamentally very, very risky uh, and could put them out of business if it doesn't work. So like all companies, there needs to be some reward at the end of the journey, just to kind of motivate them to take those risks in the first place. I wanna pause for a second and switch to talking about insulin because uh, I just understand the numbers a bit better, having sat in, sat in kind of that side. When we were developing the technology that we were working on, uh, it came straight from a university, exactly like the polio vaccine. We worked out that whilst the technology had been in the university, about 20 million uh, pounds worth 
of research and development funding had come straight from the government or straight from the public and had been used to create this technology. We moved it into the startup company. The startup company spent a further two million pounds or so uh, of research and development activity to get it to the point where it started to look interesting. And as we started to look at the journey ahead, we started to work out what is actually required to get this thing into the hands of the people that will need it. Well, we still need to go through clinical trials and we still need to, at some point, probably build a factory to actually produce this stuff en masse. We did some calculations and we worked out that it was gonna cost somewhere between one to $1.5 billion to do both of those things. Reasonably expensive, quite expensive for a startup or, or for most people, I would argue. Here is where my understanding of the value of a patent comes into play. The patent in this instance protects the journey ahead because it is so expensive to actually go through the development process to prove that it works and then to produce it. The number of people that will be willing to fork out this $1.5 billion without some protection that on the other side of this journey, because it is risky, it still could fail, uh, that they will be able to make their money back and hopefully then some, I guess. Uh, the number of people that will go through that without that assurance is pretty close to zero. If everyone has access to the discovery, then very much it's the first person to get to market wins. Uh, and actually what you find is that that is such a high risk proposition that it diminishes appetite for actually taking ideas forward. What's really interesting is that if as a scientist, you accidentally disclose a fantastic invention and so as a result cannot patent, cannot protect that invention because it's already in the public knowledge, the number of people that will actually give you some finance to help you take that idea and realize it and put it into the world and save lives or, or save the climate or any of those things, it's pretty much zero. And that includes the government, which I think is interesting and worth knowing. The government thinks similarly along these lines. At the moment, the US uh, has a contract out with Pfizer for $1.95 billion for their vaccine. The contingencies around that though, are that they only pay this money if Pfizer successfully gets their idea through clinical trials, converts their factories to be able to produce this stuff, and then delivers 100 million doses. Because the government at the end of the day totally justifiably wants some guarantees for their money. Seems totally reasonable. So what I think the commonality in these two situations is, is that if you remove that motivator, either the delivered result for the government or the ability to make some sort of financial gain for the company or for the investor, the behavior and the appetite to work that hard and to take that risk kind of goes away. It gets a little bit diminished. And that I think is why rare incurable, dis incurable diseases remain incurable diseases because there aren't sufficiently uh, the, the number of people that are suffering from these afflictions to justify the financial burden to actually try and solve them. And interestingly, even the government thinks this way. Even the government rarely puts funding pots towards solving rare incurable diseases, I guess because the argument is that there are bigger problems to solve. So how do we think about this in a sensible way? Like what are the steps that we can do to get the result that we want, that we aren't grossly kind of price gouging drugs as they get onto the market, uh, but that we continue to motivate the behavior of invention, of discovery, and of taking this risky journey. I think fundamentally it's important to maintain these, these motivators, this system of intellectual property protection, but I think equally it is important to prevent gross overcompensation in the financial reward on the other side. I think that the government has a better set of tools in its tool belt, keep the patent protection in place to motivate that effort, to, to motivate the spend and the, the invention, but instead regulate the sale price. Think about what that means. This forces democratization of access to these vaccines and insulins and other drugs uh, that you might be producing as a large pharma company. With a low sale price, companies are incentivized to reach as many people as possible to make the sums of money that previously they were making by offering top tier products. Going one step further, if you care about creating a system that is better at distributing wealth, maybe a better system to implement is to tie the price of that insulin to the price of minimum wage. 
and maybe then watch how large pharmaceutical companies suddenly start lobbying for an increase to the minimum wage. Obviously, this is not a perfect solution. There will be holes in this approach. It's a messy problem and it requires quite a lot of thought, probably not solvable in 10 minutes of conversation. But what do you think? Leave a comment. I want to know. Until that point, I will see you next time.